There's been a lot of talk lately about the gap between the rich and the poor. Um, the common sense or popular notion of, about the gap between the rich and the poor is that if you, if you increase the capitalism in a country, uh, what you'll do is you'll increase the wealth, uh, say, at the top 1%, and then the the 99 percent people, the people below the top echelon, the people not in charge, uh, those people will become more poor as capitalism increases. Uh, that's the uh, Marxist view of capitalism. Uh, it is incorrect. Um, we're going to use I'm going to use today uh, a graphic uh, display in order to try to explain the factors that might increase the gap between the rich and the poor. And in this country, we've had in the last three years or so. A lot of experimenting uh, with uh, reduction in capitalism. Uh, capitalism is where free people trade to mutual benefit and compete with one another, trying to outdo each other in making products and services. Socialism is uh, where there is a command and control kind of economy, essentially plan or some central planning, and, and there is a, you know the the wealth of citizens is confiscated through increased taxes and then the the head the government uh, tries to do their central planning and the central power the arbitrary power of the government determines who wins and loses uh, they pick the winners and losers uh, with bailouts and, and and stimulus plans and such uh, so we'll, we'll see what has happened in uh, in the last three years uh, with a graphic display but first I'll introduce the graphic display and the players in it and it'll take a few seconds to get it into view okay so here we, what we see the top is the government and there's somebody in charge of the government on the left there's the companies and there's somebody in charge of the company the man sitting on top or the woman people underneath the, on the companies are employees of the company and the same with banks on the right. There's a CEO or a head of a bank, and people who work for that bank. And then just a bunch of general people at the bottom showing the people here are purple. Uh, the green arrows you see on the sides, uh, for instance, on the left, the CEO of the company is is got a green arrow sent to employees of the company. And what that is is cash flow. It's the, the, the CEO is paying the workers and the employees to to produce something of value, to produce it well enough. In, to outcompete other companies. Uh, if the company CEO did not pay the employees money in order to do this service, uh, he couldn't compete on a, in a market uh, with other companies that do. Another company could come by and start paying a little bit more money to the employees and those employees will move over from one company. The good ones will, will go where the money is, where they're paid for their services. Uh, it's a basic concept of trade and, and justice uh, people will move to where they're, they're if they can produce a good service, they'll, they'll get paid for it. It's a reward for producing something good. The same with the banks. Uh, example would be just as a bank teller that it doesn't steal steal money from the cash till. That's uh, one thing. You want to pay people who, who have self-restraint uh, or are good at servicing uh, people, uh, members, or not members, just, just general people in the bank. So the people will go there and put their money in that bank as opposed to other banks where they get uh, more poor service. Uh, so we got the green arrows with the cash flow and cash in the companies producing something of value and then uh, growing and then sharing some of that wealth in order to compete. If they Again, if they didn't share that, if they didn't pay their employees, uh, the employees would move to another company who would and that company, that new company, would outperform the old company. And so you, you, you get a competition for, for talent and, and product. And it involves money changing hands. And, and uh, that's an example of the, the display. Now what we've seen in the last three years in this country, an, a decrease in capitalism and an increase in socialism. Remember I said uh, capitalism is where free people trade uh, to mutual benefit. They associate with one another freely. The products they, they, they produce, they sell freely. Now what happens now when we throw a wrench in that engine? And here's what we have today. If you look at this new representation, we have a government giving bailouts and stimulus plans to uh, corporations and banks. Example corporations might be GM, uh, GE, 
uh, Goldman Sachs, Solyndra. Um, the government has given the heads of those companies and the heads of the banks lots of money, a whole lot of money, um, recently. What happens when you give these top guys, these top one percenters, when you give them a whole lot of money, what happens to the relationship between them and their employees? So right now I'm making some changes to the cash flow that had previously occurred from CEOs to workers and from the head of the bank to the, say, the bank teller, loan agent. And here's what we get when the government steps in like they have in the last three years. We get dashed arrows now, the green arrows from the company CEO to the employees and from the bank CEO to the bank employees is now dashed, making it uh, lessened. This is because the CEO of the company no longer relies on his or her employees to produce good products. Why is that? It's because the extra cash flow coming from the government down to that CEO makes them less reliant on uh, the market. And this is what central planning does. It, it increases, it con concentrates the wealth in the top 1% uh, and se severs the normal relationship between a, a head of a company or a bank and the employees where the, the trading where they were trying to out compete other companies and banks and therefore the incentive to pay their employees money. So the government with the, with the arrows here has increased the amount of money flowing to the CEOs and the banks and we have done this in this country tremendously. It's a great experiment, not great, but it's an experiment and we've see, we see the results now in an increased gap between the rich and the poor. Socialism has increased. We have an increase in socialism in this country and that has increased the gap between the rich and the poor in this country. And I just showed you uh, graphically why that is by analyzing the, the factors and the incentives between what a company does, what a top, the top CEO of a company needs to do to get people and when that CEO doesn't necessarily need to produce good products anymore but just relies on uh, relationship to the government. Uh, this is the, 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 the type of thing you get under socialism and I wanted to show you how that works uh, graphically. Okay, thank you.